a big I. Is everyone looking at a big I? Okay. Yes. Very good. <laughs> so this is our Canvas site. And here's our home page. So I've gotten onto it by courses. I've selected TA 136, which is our Canvas site. This is our home page. I would like to start with our land acknowledgement. Would somebody be comfortable reading that? Anybody interested in reading that? I'm, if not, I'll happily do it. I can read it. Is that Amy? Christine. No, but I heard somebody said I can read it before you. Christine said it. <laughs> okay. I said it. Okay. I just didn't, I thought I heard two people. That's why I'm checking. Okay. So Christine, would you like, have you seen the land acknowledgement before? I have. Has everyone seen it? This is one thing that we do to honor, honor the land. And by the way, I'd like to point out, let me see if I can get a, uh, can you see my cursor? So this is the theater building right here. This is, if we were on campus, we would be in this building. This is the, my office is that little tiny corner right there. And this is what we call the West Lawn or the Great Meadow. And this land all belonged to the Chumash people. And City College as an institution and myself individually, I did it long before City College did, but it's important that we acknowledge the fact that the Chumash people, we are, we are honored to be on their ground. Even if we are not there in person right now, we are there in spirit. So go ahead, Christine, and you guys can all follow along. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the Chumash people who are traditional customs custodians of this, custodians of this land. We pay our respects to the Chumash elders past, present, and future, who call this place the land that Central Bible City College sits upon, the home. We are honored to be guests on this land and are proud to continue the tradition of coming together, growing as a community we thank the Chumash community for the stewardship and support, and we look forward to strengthening our ties as we continue a relationship of mutual respect and understanding. Thank you. One thing, I, I see you moving close to your screen, and I realize I did not make one announcement, which is, at the top of your screen, you may see that it says Pam is screen sharing. Do you see that? And next to that, you should have options. And with those options, you can change your screen view. So you can make it larger, you can make it smaller. So if there's some time when I'm sharing a screen and you need to use those options, that's happening only on your end. So is that clear to everybody? That's something that actually I just recognized, but right next to where I think it says you're, you're seeing, you're viewing Pam's screen or something like that, then you can have options to change your screen view. And it can be 50% or 100% or something like that. So if you need something a different size, please feel free to do that. Any questions? Okay. Um, and don't, don't hesitate to, at this point, we're a small group, you can just un, unmute your mic and you can just uh, say anything that you'd like. So I want you to, this is a Chumash elder. I wanted you to see the, what the Chumash uh, people, a very beautiful people look like. And, you know, we are literally in Chumash land. So there are many, many people among us who have Chumash heritage and are very proud of it. And not, of course, just the Chumash Casino, which is also a great place if you're over 21. Okay, 
resources at Santa Barbara City College. You can click on this link when you come to the home page and it will give you COVID-19 resources and what our campus operations are doing and that is updated regularly. Food share. We have a food share at Santa Barbara City College if anyone is food insecure and even if you're not food insecure they often get uh, donations of fresh fruits and vegetables and I know I remember seeing people it used to be right before this class on Wednesdays and they'd come in with big boxes of um, you know vegetables and stuff and stick them out in the hallway so it, they do continue that it's generally on the first Wednesday of the month now that we're in we're in school again that may be more frequently again those notifications will come through your pipeline so be sure that you're reading your pipeline email. And if you have a different email that you prefer, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. We have an academic full-time counselor for theater. She's shared with theater and music and I think art and a couple of others, but Carmen Rivera, you can make an appointment to see. Now that everybody is by appointment, I've had some people say they could not even get an appointment until today. So that can be very difficult. Um, so just so you know, uh, you can um, just know that you can make an appointment to do that, okay? We still have health services. They are available by telehealth. Uh, nurse and mental health comes with your health fee and you can get six counseling appointments per semester. So you can actually have a regular counselor that you can go talk to. And in this day and age, you're a student, take advantage of anything that you can that helps you out. Um, it's hard to reach out, but when you do, you feel better. So I think it's really important. There's things that your roommates can't solve or your parents can't solve or, you know, whatever. And it's important to reach out to people who are trained to do this, you know. I'm trained to see how a hem is straight. And I say this to my kids, you know, I can see how a hem is straight. I can maybe fix your zipper or whatever. But you know, when it comes to my car, I'm going to the mechanic. So same thing with your brain. You know, we're, our brains are trying to process so much more than we're actually used to right now that it's, it's completely overwhelming our whole thing. Even if we're in a bubble, our brains are working over time. So don't hesitate. And this is what I say, and I'll just, I'll just give you my little blurb, which is I'm really excited that you've chosen a class in theater. I came to theater completely unexpectedly. I had no idea that theater was an option for a career. I had no idea costume design was an option. I had no idea that makeup was an option. I was completely uneducated in that field. Uh, but I did know that I loved playing dress up. I was really specific about what I wanted to have for Halloween. And that was in the dark ages. There were no like prepackaged Halloween things like we have now. Like Halloween has become such an extraordinary giant business. Um, but I remember, first of all, I should just let you know, I'm one of six kids. <laughs> so my dad was in college uh, and he had four kids and then he had two more. So we grew up very, very poor. I remember him bringing home, I really wanted to be a witch for Halloween. I was so excited about it. And he said, someone had donated a skirt. He brought it home and I was so mad because it wasn't black. I just thought, you got to see me. I cannot be it's black and it's a witch. That is not gonna work. So, um, you know, after that I learned how to sew and that made a huge difference because then I could have clothes that fit me which is also a class I'm teaching this semester, costume technology. And that is gonna be, that actually is a late start class, September 9th. But um, I got my first job when I moved away from, I, when I moved away from home at a small costume rental house because I could sew. I said, you know what, I made the dress I have on. And she, this woman said, I'm gonna take a chance. You know, she looked at me, first of all, you don't know this about me, but I'm six feet tall. I'm like, you know, I was called the <laughs> giant. And I've been this tall since I was 12 years old. So, you know, she's, she was very, very petite, like five two and she looked at me and she thought, whoa, okay, well, I'll take a chance. So somebody took a chance on me. I'm gonna take a chance on all of you guys. And I've worked in theater ever since, since I was 18. 
I, every single job that I have taken has been one step closer to my goal. So when I didn't have a job, I looked at a fabric store because fabric is an important part of costume and it will teach me something. Or you can work at the makeup counter, you can work, you know, make sure that you're thinking about the job that you're doing and how that's going to help you. That's why it's no surprise that so many actors are waiters. It's all about putting on a different persona. I completely get it. So, okay. Uh, Here's where I said the Zoom link. So Hannah, is this the one that didn't work for you on the homepage? Um, I didn't, I didn't use that one. So okay, I'm so this one works and then I'll try and make sure that all the Zoom links wherever they are work, okay? And we will meet by Zoom 1245 to 305. We'll have a break. You're not gonna be sitting there the whole time and actually you'll be doing a lot of um, projects. And then we'll have office hours after class. So if you wanna to talk to me privately, we can go to a breakout room, we can do whatever. Or anytime by appointment, just send me an email. You can always email me through Canvas. I noticed this summer that sometimes there's a delay with Canvas, like I wouldn't get it till the next day. So you can always go right to Pipeline and I'll get that, maybe get that sooner. There's lectures for you to access if you miss a Zoom and there'll be uh, recorded by upload by the end of the day. So when we're in, in the makeup room, we have access to all of these different pots of color, which is so exciting. And you will be having a makeup kit that you can work with. And if you um, can assemble one without buying the makeup kit, then you can do that as well. Christine, you have a question about the makeup kit? I do. Does the teacher actually assign a makeup kit to the students? You are, uh, so good question. And let me just hold on. Sorry, I'm gonna scroll. Uh, you know what, when we get to the syllabus, I'm gonna show you exactly what it is and how that works. Um, as uh, according, we work by actor's equity rules, which is that the student is responsible, the actor is responsible for providing their own daily makeup kit. And so we have a makeup option for you to look at. And we'll do that when we go to the syllabus. Um, here's an incredibly detailed makeup. Look at that tiny brush that he's using to make that incredible orange line. And I will show you some great images that are from the makeup class that look like that. Did anybody see the announcement that I sent out over the weekend? It had a makeup on it. It was a couple of bald cap examples. Did you guys see those? No? So check out this. And here's a navigation trip that we're going to look at. But before we get there, course overview and resources, I'm going to just show you that announcement. So if you didn't get your announcements, always look at them. So welcome to fall. You click on it this is what you would have seen. So this is a makeup from class. This person was a student. She came into class. And I will tell you, admittedly, this is a later makeup assignment. This is the bald cap. And uh, we'll sh this is very good right here, but you can see a little bit of the line right here, if you're looking carefully. But this is an amazing makeup that I wanted you to see. So always click on those announcements because there's going to be some fun things. Zombie. And this is another makeup from class. So this no. is an alien who ripped her skin off, right? Her skin was a mask and the skin has been removed to reveal her alien face. Again, this is utilizing uh, several techniques that we'll learn in class, but this is bald cap, a three-dimensional application of a clock hand, three-dimensional application of these raised dots, covering both her face and the bald cap with green material so that it's even, working with an even skin tone, differentiating between the two lines with a black line and with a smudged line to indicate the ripping effect of the skin coming away. And then having her human side be as beautiful as possible with groomed eyebrows, lash application. This is a 
this is a partial lash, not a complete lash going all the way to here. So a three quarter lash that is tapered, shorter to longer, and beautiful multi colored lip liner and then lip color inside. So do check out. And one thing to keep in mind is the makeup goes all the way. So the picture is fully about the makeup. We don't, you don't just deal with this part of the face, right? It's really the whole thing. In the beginning, we'll work with this part, but then we get on to the whole thing. So I just want you to take a look at some of these past student, student makeups. So check this little announcement section here. When I send you an email, that's a little tickle. And then the announcement may have more information than you're seeing in the email. I don't know if the email showed these pictures or not. Did anybody get the email? Colby, did you get the email? Yeah, so I was going to say, when I went, I tried to access the Canvas before the class started, and it said it, it opened today at 1245. The class? Yeah, so I went to the Canvas. Maybe I clicked in a weird area, because I was trying to look at, see kind of what to do to be prepared. Yeah. And I went to the Canvas, and it wouldn't, like when I clicked on an assignments, it wouldn't like it said it wouldn't open anything. But well, certain assignments are yeah. The, the the site is open, and there's certain things that are open. But only the first yeah. week is open. So I don't know. If, was that I don't know when it opened because I checked this morning at like eleven and I was having trouble navigating. Oh, that's so interesting because the whole site itself was open. I saw that you were on it when I was working on it, and I was yeah. working on it on Friday. And the whole site should have been open before Saturday morning. And then okay. as we go through, assignments are published. And then when they're published, they're accessible. So we'll talk about that today. Thank you. When you got the email, did you see these pictures? No, I didn't. I have. OK, did you see them in your email, Christine? Yes, or did I you did. see them because you came to the, the announcements right here? I have. OK. All right, I'm gonna go back to the home page because I wanna talk about a little bit of navigation. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm realizing that there's a lot of outside noise. I live in kind of an industrial area. Are you guys hearing the trucks and stuff or should I try and close my door? I don't, I don't hear, hear trucks, but I hear noise. Someone's got a TV on or someone I do hear some background noise, which is not coming from here. So if you, if that, I'll tell you what you can do. If you're not talking, if you mute, then we won't hear whatever background noise is at your house or your location. And then I'm going to run and close my door so you don't have that background noise. So if everybody practices the mute, then we don't hear any ancillary noise and your roommates don't have to be super quiet. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to home page because I want to take you down through here so that you can look at a couple of fun things and you're going to have to do this for the, the course. So you can check, click on this and you'll go to the course overview. This is Canvas. And it will talk to you about, here's the overview for this class, okay? Why take this class? What we're gonna do in this class? How the course is laid out in modules? I will be using the Canvas syllabus page. So you, we're gonna go to that page also for information today. So don't worry about that. Announcements, what we were just talking about is the way to check for any new information, especially watching live performances online. I try to keep track of those and I'll give you some live performances that you can watch. You'll be doing um, two play performance reports. So those will require that you watch some things on the run. Okay, here's our course objectives. My expectation and a grading scheme. So you'll wanna take a look at those. And then uh, next, you can see our course resources. This is also listed on the home page, so you can click from that as well. We have the SBCC Writing Center. Tutors can work with you for writing. This is very, very important. You will do some writing in this class. It is temporarily located online. Here are the hours and here's the way to contact the Writing Center. 
So please use every resource that you can in this time so that you can be as prepared as possible. Here's some frequently top requested for this class. So I've, we're gonna be working with the play um, Antigone, but where are the blank schematics? So here they are. And I'm gonna show you a couple of other places you can find them. Antigone is gonna be a group project, but you'll be reading the play and I'll send in the assignment page, you'll be able to read that as well. When we get to the final makeup information, here's that as well. Here's a trailer, which is something very interesting for you to look at for a contemporary company. And this is an animated Antigone. So we'll be able to look at those things. If you're interested in further makeup training, you can look at, of course, there are many books. So they're both online and in bookstores. Chaucer's is quite great right now. You can order online and pay for it and pick it up. You can visit Makeup Mag. This is the website of the Makeup Artist Magazine. And um, so there's some uh, great opportunities you can look at this. There are makeup schools, a lot of them in Los Angeles. The International Makeup Artist Trade Show. Will, I don't know if it's going to happen next year. It's generally in June, and we'll try and keep track of it. Local 705 is the the IATSC union in Los Angeles for motion picture, hair, and makeup artists. And this is their website, so you can cruise around on that. And USITT, which is United States Institute for Theater Technology, has an annual convention, and it is scheduled for March of 2021. So we'll see. We'll keep track and see if that's going to happen. So there's a couple of things that are from the home page. Let's go back there. That you might want to look at. So you can see that I'm going to try and populate the Canvas site with as much information as I can give you. You can look uh, about your instructor, and these two things are not going to. Oh, I think this is going to populate to something I didn't change yet. Let's see. There you go. This is from a previous class. So I can give you a um, question and answer page right here that you guys can look at. And this is the way our discussions will work in class is you will, there will be a topic and you can post things right here and we can read each other's information. Okay. All right. So now the next thing I'd like to point out is this course works in modules. So let's go to the, I was gonna to go to the first module. You know what, let's take a break. It's 10 minutes before two. I'd like to take a 10 minute break. We'll come back at 2 p.m. and then we'll finish up by going through our modules and going, at the, going to the syllabus. So for this, we're gonna take a 10 minute break. We'll be off camera. And then we'll come back to do, look at the first modules on Canvas, how it operates and the syllabus. All right, so let's gonna stop share and I will pause the recording. Okay, so back to screen share. You will be able to see this when you access your Canvas sites, okay? So back to here. Let me see what I'm looking at already. This is the daily syllabus that we use in a different format. And this is where we were. Let me just get to, wait a minute. I've lost where I was. That's a bummer. Maybe I was somewhere else. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Let me stop this for a second and reorganize my desktop because, boy, I touched something and now I am doing something else. So talk amongst yourselves for a sec. I went away and it's like everything has changed. Oh, here we go. I was looking <laughs> in the wrong place. Okay. Now I'm prepared. <laughs> I felt like I had it totally together and, you know, that's what happens. So here we go. We're going to look at this. 
I want to pick my desktop, but we'll go to here. Okay. And then I'll move that up. So everyone is looking at uh, Canvas, but um, assignments, but we're not going to do that right now. So uh, we were on home page. <laughs> when you get into your Canvas site, this is TA 136. This is this class. This is your navigation menu down the left hand side. Okay. Your menu is going to look slightly different because I have removed some of the things that you don't need. So all this stuff down here, if it has the eye with the, with the line through it, it's something you don't need to actually pay attention to. Modules are the way this course navigates. Okay. So we've been on home page, which is bolded. We've been on announcements where you'll get like the up to the current, up to the minute stuff that I want to communicate with you because I found something awesome that I want you guys to see. But modules is the way that we will navigate through the semester. So I'm going to click on modules. So here you go. Here in modules, we have a very straightforward way of progressing. Welcome to Theatrical Makeup, start here. I'm going to ask that you all do these. If you have done a Canvas course before. Sorry. Question? No? Okay. If you've done a Canvas course before, these things will take you zero seconds. You can just click, 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 right? You might find something interesting about me. Um, but this Canvas student guide If you've not been on Canvas, it helps you access tutorials on how to understand Canvas. So this is really important. I'm just gonna move us off to the side here. Okay, so it will take you just under 13 minutes to review all the tutorials. So if you have any questions about Canvas, please, you're gonna to need to go through this first introduction module so that you will be fully fluent in Canvas. And because we can't see each other face to face, this is the most um, efficient and clear way for you to look at the Canvas guide. You can review what are the basic computer specifications you need for Canvas. I'm gonna tell you something really funny. I was at my office yesterday and in order to go to the campus, we have to fill out a whole COVID questionnaire. We have to, you know, be sure that we don't have any inspection, any infection, any temperature. We've never touched or been around anybody that has COVID. We have to wear a mask even when we're in our office. We're not supposed to see, you know, be within, of course, six feet of anyone. But I turned on my computer and it said, this computer is not, cam uh, not compatible. <laughs> I just thought... Oh my goodness, we're asking everyone to access, you know, Canvas and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. And in my office, my computer is not compatible to it, but I made it do what I wanted anyway. But so here's your computer basic specifications. Here's your browser. Oh, that was it. It was the browser wasn't supported. So I had to update or something. How can I use Canvas on my mobile device? So this is really important that you have the most information possible about accessing Canvas because this is the way that I deliver the material to you. And we don't have a textbook that's required. And I've done that because the textbook was well over $150. And it's a fantastic, amazing book. You would use it for years and years and years, but many people were not reading it. And that was very discouraging. And it's really terrible to have to have you buy it for not reading it. Here is a video on how to reply to a discussion. And we'll be doing that, so this is really important. How to upload your assignment file. And look at these, three minutes each. How to take a quiz. So you're going to upload an assignment before Wednesday, and you're going to take a quiz before Wednesday. How to look at your grades, okay? So this is really important. You can use list view to manage your courses so that you don't have to see your courses all over this page in a block if you don't like that. If you want them in alphabetical order, if you like that, 
you know. If you feel comfortable doing so, you can add your video to your profile and that just go on to your student guide and edit your profile. And trust me, when I had to do this last summer, it took me like four hours to figure out how to do this because I am not, this is not my wizardry. But somehow I was able to make it and you have a photo up there of me. So although with my pre-COVID haircut, like now I have a pony so, uh, soon anyway. So you can edit your profile and if you'd like to put a picture, I think that's terrific. Um, how to set your time zone. We are in Pacific and this is our Pacific time zone. So that's great. You can turn off notifications, but please don't turn off notifications from me. Just selfish. How to view your feedback. I will give you feedback in Canvas to your assignments. So you can view your feedback in the gradebook and you can then communicate with me back via that same page, okay? So that's some great things for you to look at is the Canvas Student Guide. Hopefully we're going back to modules, woohoo! So again, modules takes you right to here where you're gonna see the overview which you're gonna review, your resources, about me and you'll see my little picture that I managed to put up there, student guide and additional support. Here is your first assignment. And this is the way assignments look. So they're pretty clear, week one, assignment one, and the assignment is Canvas submission practice. This is a practice so that you can upload to Canvas. And I want you to be able to do that so that you don't feel like, oh no, 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 you know, it's due in two minutes and I, what am I gonna do? That's, I'm, I'm telling you from my personal experience, you guys might be super calm and not do that kind of stuff at all. But I know that I am deadline driven and I generally figure out how much before the deadline, like with taxes <laughs> until I have to get them in. So um, this is all in your assignment your preferred name, you're gonna type this up on a document. The best way for me to reach you, uh, what device you'll be using to access this class. Please let me know if you have access to take a picture of yourself and what device you're gonna use for pictures. Upload this document, one thing, your name, how I can reach you, what device you're using, and upload it. And here's your guidelines. 25 words or less, okay? Just like, give me the facts. And then you can submit it in the, in the format requested. And here's your student guide in case you don't know how to do that. I'm even giving you points for it. So it's available from today until Thursday at 11.59, but it's actually due tomorrow, okay? So I want you to do things right away and you can see that's what, that's your, that's your first assignment. It's five points. I want you to get used to working with Canvas. Let's go back to modules. Can I ask a question? Sure. Should I, you want uh, me to be on that page? Just, what's that? You want me to go back to the assignment? No, no, no. It's because it, the, it says upload the document. We can use Google Docs or any of the options. We don't have to use Word. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, Google Docs is fabulous. They love Google. Okay. And when you go to the submit page, uh, uh, actually, hold on, maybe I can do that for you. So yeah, you can do Google Docs, I love that. So here's one thing that, this is how I try to find out what you guys do, see, I'll, I'll look at the student view. And let me go to that assignment and I'll show you how to do that actually. So see, you guys have a little bit less stuff to look at, let's look at modules. I could go to assignments, right? but I'm gonna to go to modules first because that's how I'd like you to access the course. We'll go to that first assignment. Here it is. It's your practice submission. And it says submit assignment right here, right? Down at the bottom, you click that. And then after you do submit assignment, it will tell you, you can upload a file. You can go to your Google Drive, okay? So, you know, we all have Google Drive because it's a secret, but Pipeline is really a Gmail account. So, yeah, it took me the longest time to figure that out. We do have the big brother with us, Google. So you can upload a file, but please don't use pages for some reason. Those Mac, and I'm on Mac, 
but pages and numbers can kind of confuse Canvas for some reason. If I get something that I can't download, I'll just let you know, okay? But you can then do Google Drive if you want to go to Google, and you can then have lots of choices of what you want to upload, okay? And that's why it says do it in a certain assignment, and then you're just going to submit. I must attach something. Thank you very much. I'm going to go back. So yeah, that's, that's, that seems familiar, right? I'm going to leave. Yes. Now I can go away from student view. Okay, was that helpful? Let's go back to modules because I want to talk about a couple of other things and then we're going to do a little breakout room uh, work. So you have to complete this section before you move on to the next section. So that's also one thing to know because I need to know what device you're using, how you're going to access the class and that you can upload something. And then the next few assignments are right here. And this is the first, our first discussion we're going to do in breakout rooms. But here's our little, every week you'll have an overview to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. Just click on that. You can click on it on, if I'm up to speed, you can click on it on Sundays, but <laughs> otherwise on Mondays you'll get it. So introduction to theatrical makeup, overview and to do overview and I'll try to always give you an image to uh, ignite your interest and yes masks are part of makeup too did anybody see our work last year when we did sense and sensibility and we used masks yeah it was pretty fun Amy was part of the class that actually made those masks and so we was Ida. what so was Ida and Ida was too. Yes, that's right. Ida was part of that. That was really kind of wild and fun. So here's what we're going to cover this week. Canvas basics, how to communicate and submit. What is a good workspace for this class? This is a really important thing that we're going to, that we're going to break out and have discussions about this. What is my face shape? Introduction to health and safety and character analysis. And then you have a little to-do list. In order to successfully complete week one, please do the following. Review the lecture presentation if you need to do that. Submit your preferred name and way to contact you. That's your first assignment. You're going to create your personal workspace, take a picture of it, and submit it through Canvas. You're going to join your classmates in a discussion, a group discussion online about character analysis. I'm going to give you some prompts. You'll complete quiz one. And all that is, it's, it's um, there's no wrong answers, okay? I'll show you how quizzes work and you'll see there's no wrong answers. It's a way to communicate to me where you are and what your current makeup skills are. So it's just, it's in the quizzes section and you'll see when we go back to the modules where you access that. You will determine your face shape. Again, this is another assignment. You're gonna download a face chart that is that matches your determined face shape the best you can. And we're gonna start thinking about a makeup kit, whether you have to buy one or whether you can assemble one. So that's our little to-do list. That every week, that's gonna be the very first thing, okay? And then you're going to do an assignment, determine your face shape, and then you're gonna do assignment number three, create a workspace. Here are two face charts. I'll show you, and you can take a look at these on your own screen. So you will have an option to download always, and then you can look at it right here. So we will discuss the face chart. We're not gonna discuss it today. It's, it's more than what we need to do today, but I'm just giving you an example of one face chart. There's hundreds of them on the internet, but I've given you two that have the two basic, the two most common face shapes, and you can probably work with one of these. So let's look at, wait a second, I'm trying to, it's a little tricky when you're on Canvas to use the back arrow button, so I want to make sure that I'm not doing the wrong one, because you don't want to accidentally get out of there. So that's the oval, and then there's also a square face, 
which is probably the one that I would select. So we're going to have an assignment and then you can choose if you want to download one of these or if you're going to need to search off the internet. This is going to be a major form of communication for us. This is the makeup chart for a schematic. They're called a face map. They're anything, but you will be drawing on these, your makeup ideas, okay? Doesn't matter whether you can draw or not. That does not matter. You know why? Practice makes perfect. Or practice makes it improve, okay? All right. So here is our first week. This is the thing you're gonna do immediately is assignment number one. Week one, assignment number two, this you're gonna do this on your own. And week one, assignment number three, you're gonna do this at home, but we're gonna look at this page. Then we'll go to breakout rooms and I want you to brainstorm with the people in your breakout room about how can I find a workspace in my current location, okay? So let's look at this for a minute. And you can come back to this because this is your assignment. What should my workspace look like? Why do I need one? So here's why you need one. Makeup application takes an in intense focus on a very small canvas and that's your face. Find a physical location that allows this focus. So you're gonna try and brainstorm with the other folks in your group to talk about what's gonna be important. Here's what you need, a flat surface. You can use a small table, you can use a tray, you can use a cookie sheet, you know? Especially if you can keep it the whole semester, you can put a paper towel on it and you can have that be your workspace. The great thing about using a paper towel, we're gonna to talk about this Wednesday, we're gonna talk about health and safety, is how to keep everything very, very clean. You need a mirror to look at your face. One that can stand up by itself. If it has a stand, that's terrific. If you wear glasses, you may need one that has magnifying ability if you can't get, see close up. You can prop it up against a small stack of books or something if you're a coffee can, anything. Uh, you know, two cans of lima beans and your mirrors in front. You need a place to post inspiration pictures and this, your schematic that you're going to draw on, which could be a small bulletin board, can be a piece of flat cardboard. You can just tape things up to it. And you need a good light source. Natural light from a window is good. A lamp will work. This will take some experimentation. So this is not a bad workspace right here. If you put your makeup mirror right here, you get light from the window. You have a good flat surface. You have room to move around. You can take a picture. This one could work too. It's kind of busy, but some people like to work with a lot of stimulation. So, you know, there's a lot of fun things to look at here. And if your makeup chart is here, that would just work just fine. And your mirror, and you could turn this lamp on and this lamp on, so you have a, a lot of work. Here's a super uh, place that can work. There's a mirror on the wall. You could put your makeup stuff here. You can scoot way in so you can see close up. You can stand and lean into the mirror. So this is what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna locate a space where you live and work. And this is really important because you're gonna to have to do this makeup stuff. And if other people are around, you might feel um, like you're on the spot or you might feel like you're under the microscope or you might feel some way. So you wanna find a place that feels really safe. So we're gonna go into breakup rooms um, and I'll just tell you, it can even be a closet. Two of my favorite workstations were in closets because I'm one of six kids, not at a lot of available space. So organize your space, take a picture of it, upload it to Canvas. You can put it in a Word doc, a Google slide and submit it and there'll be a way to do that, okay? So we're going to now, that's our introduction to Canvas, that's our introduction to the course and we're gonna go into little two breakout rooms and you're gonna talk about what can you do to create a great workspace in your place? And, and you know, you can just, um, wow, that's interesting. I have, let me see. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put you guys into different rooms and we'll see about, uh,
Okay, here we go. This is working fine. So, okay, let me think about this. We're gonna put in three people to a room. So here you go to this one. Pam, are we gonna reconvene? And then we'll reconvene, yeah. Uh, we're gonna do this for like 10 minutes, okay? And then I'm gonna assign the next room. And then I'll assign the next room. And you're gonna zoom away and I will come into each of your rooms and talk to you, okay? <clears throat> So you should be finding your rooms and then I'll see if anybody is not assigned and I can work through it. Do you see your room, Sue? Are you frozen, Sue? There we go. Okay. Oh, hi, Kim. Kim. <laughs> hi. Supervision. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to pause the recording. So I gave you privacy in your breakout rooms, and now it, you guys can, if you have someone from your group who will just share a little bit about what a, a good workspace might be, um, that would be terrific. So we had the Amy, Cara, and Colby group. Um, who's going to sort of share out a little? Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, we just we just really talked about light and as much natural light as possible. And Colby and Amy actually have really good um, opportunities for that. I don't as much, but I also have lots of, I have a makeup light and a bunch of things. Um, but we also talked about just kind of, being able to be organized and hide things away from roommates or, you know, just have what we need right where we need it when we need it. So. Yeah, good. Very good. Those are all really good thoughts. The light and organization really critical, even in person. Uh, when we are in our classroom, in our lab, I have everybody identify their items. Mm -hmm. So one way to identify your items, like to make sure it doesn't go to your roommates drawer somehow. <laughs> Right. It's, um, we actually, you know, take a piece of tape and wrap it around. Yeah. And so you have colored tape, you can wrap it around and then you know, you know, oh, by the way, that is my eyebrow pencil. Or That's good. my brush. Or on the bottom, you can, you know, put a piece of tape and on the bottom of a, you know, a container, you can write your initials so that it's really clear. And that even, I, I can see how that could be valuable at home too. So good idea. Okay, Sarah, how about your group? Do you want to share out or somebody else or Hannah? Oh, yeah, I'll share. Um, we also talked about uh, natural lighting and also how it's like important to have a personal workspace where you can really focus without distractions. Good, good. Yeah, that idea of without distraction is going to be important because when we're in when we're in person, we will, um, we will be working for two hours at a time, you know? And so I want you to be able to have at least two hours that you can, some of your makeups won't take that long, but if you are doing something that is a layered piece or you're waiting for something to dry like spirit gum or a latex thing or something like that, you will need to have a good unbroken time frame and that people can respect that you need to be focused at for those time. That's really important. Okay. Uh, my other group is Ida and who was in your group? Or no, Ida, were you with Sarah? Let me see. I got to go look at your faces. Where are you? Okay. So Lois, in your group? Yeah, I was with Hannah and Sue. And, okay. Um, so you're a little bit soft. Maybe your volume can come up a tad. Um, can you hear me now? Okay, can everybody hear pretty well? A little um, bit louder. With Hannah, and, um, with Hannah and Sue. 
and um, we also discussed about the lighting close to a window. Um, Sue is um, going to another room. Um, I'm also going to another room, I think, um, closer to a window um, with makeup, like a makeup mirror with a, a light in it. Oh. Um, also, like, um, maybe to cover the, like, wherever you're working on, cover it with something so that it doesn't get stained by latex or uh, the products that you're using. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Good. Okay, everybody had great, great, great suggestions. And we will talk more about this on Wednesday because we'll break down the makeup kit, we'll break down the supplies that are listed, and that is in the syllabus. So uh, we're gonna just take, I'm gonna show you where that is briefly. And let me see if I can go back here. There we go. So this is our this is our workspace that you're all going to try. I mean, look, you know, if you're working in a space like this, is that hard to focus? But let's go back to the syllabus. So please read the syllabus before Wednesday. Here it is. And we'll take time to uh, go through this, but theatrical makeup techniques. This is an inclusive environment. It is my goal that this class is a safe place and offers freedom for creative expression for you. Theater in practice and performance is a place of storytelling. Every individual story is valuable and we each can learn so much from listening to one another. I welcome each of you, encouraging you to bring in your cultural heritage and storage, especially with respect to race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, disability, age, veteran status, citizenship status, socioeconomic status, religion, and past history. Those are things that, believe it or not, they are on our face. I recognize that I come with my own perspective. You know, I'm a white, older female, so I have that, definitely that bias. And I look at each person as an integral part of the mosaic that collectively we are building together. We in this class will have a mosaic that will not be like any other class experience. Every class has its own personality and each person brings something to this class. And so I want you to know that every class is unique and strengthened by your personal narrative, what you bring that's what you have, what is inside of you. And I am delighted that you're taking this class. Theater builds community. So please let me know if there's a time when my teaching is not inclusive to you so that I can improve. If there's a time when you feel unsafe or your learning is adversely affected by an outside experience, please let me know. That's really important. We've had this time of COVID, there's a lot of outside distractions. So there's our class, online is always available, here I am. This is my office at school. So you can see, here's my little book thing, here's my antenna, I put them on when I feel like I need to get some extra inspiration. <laughs> and there's a batik back here from Africa. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's my ball to sit on to relax. Here's my ever-present scrunchie to make my hair go into a ponytail. So here's the syllabus. So please take a look at this and read through. And Hannah, did you go to this, this um, click for the Zoom? Because there's a Zoom here as well. And uh, this is the text that if we were going to meet in person, it's been recommended. But again, like I said, I feel it's too expensive. We're going to work on Antigone as a group project. And so in case you haven't heard, it will be our student production this fall. And everyone has an opportunity to apply and audition for Antigone. It's gonna be a large cast, probably up to 21. It will be performed on Zoom. So all of these, everybody who's interested, and like I was thinking when, when uh, Chanel, when you were saying, well, I'm trying to organize these people on Zoom. And so anyway, you know, or Cara, your, your experience with working with HD and like, oh my, on Zoom, not very forgiving. So we're going to be working on Antigone and you can see that these 
expressions if you've read Antigone is the daughter of Oedipus. Remember, an Oedipus blinded himself, bloodied down, so this is all very important. One of the first thing Antigone does is dig up her brother. So um, I just want you to know that we're going to work on that collectively and for the final project assignment, don't think about that yet, please. Uh, that's way down the road. Here's our supplies. The Ben Nye cream makeup kit or equivalent, take a look at what you get. Don't buy it yet because we need to color match. I'm going to click this link in just a second. And then here's a supplies list. Okay, and then this blah, 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 blah is stuff that you can all read. Okay, and please do read it because this talks about everything that we do in class. And every makeup that you have, you'll be required to do a schematic, a reference picture, a digital record, and then a scoring rubric. So we can talk about this on Wednesday, so please read it before you come. I'm just going to do a quick link so you can see what is in the Ben Nye makeup kit that we can buy directly from Ben Nye. I can organize that for you, and you can call uh, Pam Lasker at the theater box office. If you're a Promise student, let me know because it's free. It's a required supply. And this is a link to that you can see exactly what you'll get in the Ben Nye kit. And this lists everything that you have. It's not a bad kit at all. And then the reason why we need to do this, and we'll do it one on one, is because it, the foundations, these are three foundations, and they will need to be color matched to you. So we'll talk about the breakdown of the kit. And if you have these things and you can have them accessible to you, you know, no need to buy one, totally fine. So. I just want to let you know if you don't have anything, this is a great way to get for $68 a lot of stuff. And we will use every single item that's in this kit. So I just wanted to let you know. So that's linked to your syllabus. Okay, so you can take a look at that before Wednesday and then we'll discuss on Wednesday. And then here's supplies. Now this is another little trick about Canvas. Anything that's in blue is going to take you to a link. If you click it right here on this little square, you get a preview of the document right in the same screen without going off of Canvas. So this is all that the supply list is, is it tells you the things that you're going to need for this class. The Ben Nye makeup kit or equivalent, which will be color matched with the um, foundations. It also color matches highlight and shadow. You know, if you have a certain, if we don't, I don't see anybody, but Wanda might need a different color of highlight instead of the extra light, which might make it go gray on her skin tone. So hers might have a slight yellow tint to it. So there's all that. Uh, you can available for purpose and then we can arrange for a pickup or I can, if you're in Santa Barbara and otherwise they can be mailed to you. A uh, wig cap, which I buy wig caps and normally that's something that I provide and give to you. Also crepe hair, which will work and I'll color match your hair with that. So that's going to be super fun. And we, we, I'll teach you how to do a three color crepe hair beard. A latex bald cap is not necessary. If we're meeting in person, we would do it. It's, uh, I will share that with you. You'll have a demo and you'll be able to watch how to do it. If it's something you're dying to do, I think it might be something that we do off off, um, what, do you, what am I trying to say, off schedule. So it would be off of our Canvas, off of our um, Zoom site. Or if you're dying to see what a, what a bald cap demo is, there is a way I'll access a little film for you. There's a lot of film available on it online. But I did have a friend who did great latex bald caps and she was working with the opera and uh, they called her up. They said, well, we're in New York. We can't get anybody to do this bald cap that will stick on this opera singer because, you know, opera singers are, they sweat a lot. They're really performing a lot from here to here. And she lived in uh, Massachusetts. And they said, how much for you to come down? And she said, Pam, which of you? I said, tell them a thousand bucks. So they have to pay your airfare. They have to do everything. So she, they paid her airfare. They put her up. She got a thousand bucks to come down and do a bald cap and then teach somebody how to do the bald cap so that they could get through their performance. So it is a, it is a great technique to be able to access. These are some recommended additional supplies and I appreciate, um, was it your group Lois that said something to cover up other stuff with? So, you know, find at home or purchase a smock. I use 
a man's dress shirt turned backwards. And I just fold the collar in. So, so because you don't want to have this get on your clothing and you don't want it all over your table. That's why I said it's important when we talk about health and safety, and we'll spend time on that on Wednesday, that you have a clean and washable surface or something that is disposable. A washcloth, hand, face towel so that you can clean your face. These, these are things that you will need so that if you have them at home, please, please try and start assembling those, you know, by, by Wednesday and think, okay, do I have this stuff? Well, everybody probably has scads of wipes right now because we're all wiping like crazy. So here's some things that are things that will be helpful and a supply box to store items in a fishing box. I, for a long, the longest time, I used a big cigar box. For some reason, it's a pretty durable cardboard and it had a great lid and I could just keep a lot of things in it. So you want to collect these things together in a, in a reasonable way, like um, Cara said, I think your group said, you know, away from your roommates so that you've got, you keep it together so it's organized. A glue stick will use this very good um, drag queen uh, technique to block out eyebrows. You'll need to get some color media so that you can fill in your worksheets so you can draw on the face map. We'll talk about that. Uh, tracing paper, if you have some at home, don't buy it if you don't have it, and I'll show you how we work with that. And then here you go, mirror on a stand, a magnifying mirror if you wear glasses, false eyelashes, if you haven't done those and you wanna learn them, they're pretty easy and fun. And uh, each of you will do a gender swap. So if you're a man, you'll be a woman. If you're a woman, you'll be a man. And those will include, it may include false eyelashes for women and it may include a beard for a man. Um, in the past, I have always required all the men to do Marilyn Monroe because she's, uh, yeah, because she's very iconic and there's some really clean details that you can like, if you can nail the eyebrows and lips, you got her. Or you nail the, the uh, eyeliner, you know, there's like three big things with her eyebrow, eyeliner and lips. Um, and then uh, for the women, they've always done Abraham Lincoln. So if you can get the beard and you can get the really that big eyeshadow, you've got him. So, you know, you will be different things. In, if you buy a Ben and I makeup kit, you will be getting a liner pencil. So that's, that's just something that's beneficial. Um, any pencil can be a lip liner, as long as it's something that is okay to be, that if you lick it, it's not going to kill you. So, you know, we don't want any of that poisoning stuff, but you saw that one makeup that I showed you where she actually had a very dark purple lip liner and then the inside of the lip was brighter. So that's how you work those kind of things. If you've got a list and a little icon there and then minimize it, it goes back to the page, but that way you don't have to go somewhere off of the page and come back and do all that stuff. So read this and that will be your syllabus. And on Wednesday, we'll come back. Any last questions before we go? Christine? You have to unmute. I actually have something better than a dish rag or something. I have makeup removal wipes. Yeah, that's on our list. So that's fine. I find that um, makeup remover wipes are very effective, but there's nothing better than water. That's why I say a washcloth that you can actually get your face completely clean. You can use a makeup wipe, and if you go over your face with a cotton ball and an astringent, you'll still get some greasy debris off your face. So that's yeah, what we'll talk about yeah. next. We'll talk about that on Wednesday in terms of health and safety. One of the things about a makeup class that is different for many of you is you're going to be putting makeup on your face and that's not an everyday experience and you'll want to protect your pores and your skin so that you don't have any breakouts the quiz that you're going to do talks about how sensitive is your skin so you have some options there and you can let me know how that is and it will talk about what you're familiar with so the, it's a quiz but really it's just a questionnaire and it was an easy way to put it in there so you get five points no wrong answers. Okay. All right. Everybody good? I have a question. Yes, Colby. Wait, I have one more question. So you mentioned the makeup kit and you said you're later going to say what colors we need or like you're going to yeah. modify it on like... Well, there's several so when... colors. The kits come in six different, six different color ranges. So it goes yeah. based on your skin tone and we'll try and... Oh, that's... 
will color match. It's like it's not based on, okay. Not based on what? Like what you assign, it, we can choose any of those color schemes that best matches us. So you're going to tell us yeah, like we'll any of those kids are. Yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to guess that. Okay. You and I together, we'll talk about it. We'll go, you know, into a breakout room. We'll let, we'll put the makeups there on screen and we'll, we'll see which one you are. I mean, there's, there's some fairly common um, kits that pretty much most people use. You know what I mean? So like if you're a white, I tend to be, I'm a white woman with light olive skin. So I don't use a fair kit because that's a pink undertone and that would not work for me. And okay. that, that foundation on it would make me look terrible. So I, I have more of a, uh, my skin is slightly olive and has a slightly yellow tint to it. So I go more to that so that you can have one foundation that matches your skin tone perfectly, one, one that's lighter and one that's darker so that we can vary where we're going with it. Okay, and okay so that list, that yeah. you put is like have the at home items ready, but later you'll be talking about what makeup yeah, kit to order. Okay, okay got, it, got exactly it. Exactly about the makeup kits. Exactly. And then I will, what I will do okay. is I can call in the order to Ben Nye. I will email nice. the order. And then you, so before I order, you can actually, you'll tell me, and then you're going to actually interface with Pam Lasker, who's our theater manager. And okay. she can take credit cards over the phone and then they can ship them to our facility and I'll see if, if people who are in Europe want them or and I can see how we can do that unless you can assemble your own kit okay cool thank you so much so car you probably don't need any of those supplies and if you just need a specific supply or something we can offline talk about it send me an email okay. I'm actually going to order a kit just so I don't have to touch mine because yeah. of COVID and stuff, but I can order mine um, from Mamie's. So once oh, I yeah, figure Mamie's out. Mamie's is totally fine. Cinema Secrets. Yeah. Okay. So I can have other people go to that as well. And are you going to order a Ben Nye then? I am. I'm going to order the same Ben Nye kit. I just have, I need help. Even me, even I need help figuring out what color I am. Everybody so. needs help. Yeah. So, and especially because I'm in my summer color right now. And in two months, I'm going to be very white again. So it's, that's the thing is we, you know, it's like, you're in Southern California. I had a girlfriend move from New York and she said, Pam, I can't tell anybody apart. Everybody's blonde and suntan. <laughs> yeah. Everybody looks alike, you know? So yeah, we'll be working on that. And uh, so what all I'm just saying is don't worry about it right now. Look at what it is, see if it's interested, whatever those supplies you can get together, those three assignments, do those. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Okay. Looking forward to it. Thank you.